Hello everyone, what's up? It's me again, Junkmaster3. Like usual, sorry for the bad lighting, but this is the best I can do for the moment. And uh, I also realized that I really need to make this video uh, because, well, anyway, this is a, f a video which I probably shouldn't have done right now. But uh, I know for sure that I still haven't made the uh, top 5 of the month for December. And I also need to get to the top 10 of uh, 2019, the best ones I've seen during that year and the top 10 worst films that I've seen during 2019. So those videos are coming up, but this is going to be the continuation of my favorite horror films throughout the 80s, and this is going to be the year 1985. So these are my top 10 favorite horror films from that year. This is a little bit hard to make because you always tend to like change your opinion from time to time, from depending on what title you're talking about. But uh, yeah, this is for now the top 10 list for my taste or my personal opinion. So uh, yeah, first up at number 10, we have Friday the 13th, part 5, A New Beginning, which I think most people say is one of the weakest films in this entire series, mainly because of, I think most of you probably have seen this film already, but I'm not going to spoil it, but uh, because of the ending, so to say. And uh, I can see why some people don't like that. But I don't have any problems with it because I think the rest of the film is really entertaining and really fun. Like most of the f films in this series or in this franchise. So uh, yeah, but anyway, this is, I mean, still, I would still consider it one of the weaker ones in the series. But I still really like it. So uh, yeah, Friday the 13th, part 5, A New Beginning is in at number 10. And at number 9, we have a werewolf film from... Yeah, obviously 1985, I'm a fucking dumbass today. But anyway, uh, at number 9 we have Silver Bullet, a rather underrated uh, werewolf film in my opinion. I've talked about this movie for quite some time in some of my older videos, so I'm not going to talk that much about this film, but a really great werewolf film, and I know, I know for sure that uh, many people do like this one, but I just think it's sort of overlooked in a way, uh, so yeah. Stephen King's Silver Bullet, really great film, and this also has Gary Busey and Corey Haim in it, so yes, yeah, always a plus, so yeah. Then at number 8 is a film which I saw for the very first time, I think it was like 2 or 3 years ago. I found this really cheap at the sci-fi convention one year, and I was like, well, this was a really good price, and this cover art is just amazing, and when I looked it up afterwards, like on eBay and Amazon, it went for, like, ridiculous money. So I'm really lucky to have this movie in my collection, because I really enjoyed it, and I thought it was a great Halloween flick in general. The Midnight Hour, made for TV film, uh, most of the time made for TV movies are sort of like a bad sign from time to time, but this one really did it right, and it captured the whole entire, like, Halloween atmosphere in a really well uh, way. Or a good way, should I say. And uh, the characters are likeable. And uh, I really like the whole party scene. Or the entire party Halloween theme of this entire film. So, uh, yeah. I don't really know what to say about this anymore. But anyway, if you haven't seen this film. Check it out and try to get a hold of it for a reasonable price. But, uh, yeah. The Midnight Hour. Then, at number 7, we have Lamberto Bava's Demons. Uh, also a really good film. I really like the concept of this film that there's like monsters inside of a film when people like watch it watch this film in the theaters or in the, at the cinema and the creatures themselves like selves like escapes from the screen and then gets onto the or like towards the audience and uh, I would say this is probably one of the very first things to you know, like first films to do that type of concept. I know there has been other movies off of this that have attempted to make the same thing, but maybe not as good as Demons. Um, but yeah, Demons, this is a great film, great monster type film in general, and I also really like the sequel as well. I actually do like the sequel a little bit more. I think I'm probably in the minority there, but uh, yeah, anyway, this one is still a great, great film. So yeah, Demons, if you haven't seen this and you like gore effects, gore effects really good gore effects, check this one out. Um, yeah, that's what, number seven. Now at number six, I can already see, like, what the hell? You put this film above, like, Demons and, like, Silver Bullet? But uh, this is just my opinion. And uh, I'm in love with this entire fran franchise in general. So, uh, yeah, at number six, we have A Nightmare on Elm Street Part 2. Um, 
Freddy's Revenge, and I know most people probably say uh, also it's this is one of the weaker ones in the series, and uh, I don't really see why. I really like it. I don't really know why people tend to really hate it. I think it's the way it goes with the guy who gets like sort of like possessed by Freddy Krueger himself, and he turns into some weird clone type of thing. Not clone, but he, I mean, if you have seen this film, you know what I'm talking about. Um, I think that's the reason why people don't like it, but I don't. I think it's a great film in general as well. But I mean, not as good as the first one, obviously. But uh, and there are better films in this franchise uh, for sure. But uh, yeah, I really like this film anyway. So yeah, Nightmare on Blah. Nightmare on Elm Street Part Two at number six, and at number five is uh, probably uh, one of my favorite Stuart Gordon films, and that film is obviously Reanimator. Uh, also, this like release is really good as well as tons and tons of special features um, what can be said about this film which hasn't already been said so uh, yeah I'm just gonna try to leave it at that because I think probably most of you horror fans out there have probably already seen this film so yeah reanimator at number five and at number four is probably one of my favorite Dario Argento films I actually do like this one more than uh, Suspiria uh, I think most people tend to really like Suspiria the most, or maybe Deep Red, but um, this is my favorite one, probably, among the ones at least, so, Phenomena, uh, yeah, what to be said about this one, if you haven't, like, seen that many Dario Argento films, like, to begin with, or if you're, like, interested in the director, this is a great way to introduce you to that entire world of Dario Argento, so, uh, yeah, the other ones I've not seen that many Dario or I haven't seen that many Dario Argento films myself. I've only seen Phenomena, Suspiria, I mean the Mother's trilogy, um, Inferno, and Trauma. I believe I think that's probably all of the films that I've seen, and uh, this is probably one of my very very favorite ones. So yeah, Phenomena at number four, and at number three we have. The classic, George A. Romero's original Day of the Dead, uh, another film which probably people have talked about so many times. Uh, the gore effects in this is just, they are spectacular and it's they are made by Tom Savini, of course, the master of practical effects, basically. I know there's other people out there, but Tom Savini is probably one among the very best ones out there. So, uh, yeah, Day of the Dead... What can be said about this film which hasn't already been said so i'm just gonna leave it at that and try not to yeah talk this movie to bits so yeah day of the dead at number three and the number two is a some another zombie film which i think is uh not underrated but I, I actually think this this is like very hard i'm like is this like number two or number three there was a really hard time for me to choose between this one or day of the dead but I'll sell with this one at number two for the moment, so Return of the Living Dead, uh, also I do really like the sequels as well, I mean I've only seen Return of the Living Dead part two and three as well, I haven't seen anyone after part three because I think most people have told me that those films are really garbage, but I really like the sequels as well even though some people tend to not like those at all, but uh, of course the original one is the very best one out of the three, uh, so uh, yeah, what to say about this one? Once again, great effects and really funny characters in this. This is more of a comedy. I mean, Day of the Dead is more like a straightforward, like, doomsday type of film. But this has more comedic elements to it. And maybe that's the reason why I like it a little bit more. But, yeah, I'm not really sure. But, uh, yeah, Return of the Living Dead at number two. And at number one comes to probably no surprise at all from, for most people. Because this is another film which I've rewatched so many times and I never get tired of it. And uh, watched it actually just like two weeks ago again. I can never get tired of this. So this is a film you can I can basically watch anytime, uh, anytime on during the day or night time or any time like period in time. Fright Night, the first one, original one. Um, yeah, I've talked about this movie very many times, so I don't really need to talk that much about it. But I had a really funny, like, experience when I watched this. I think this was, like, maybe one year ago or, like, maybe one and a half year ago. And uh, one of my friends had actually seen the remake before he watched this one. 
I haven't watched the remake myself, so I can't say anything about the remake, but I'm like a little bit, uh, I don't really feel the need to watch the remake since I'm such a big fan of the original one. But we watched the original and uh, my friend said like, you know what, I, actually, I think I actually prefer the remake. And I was just kidding with him and I said, well, get the fuck out of here. <laughs> that was like a little fun part, but... Um, Obviously, I joked with him because I mean that's his opinion. I'm not gonna change his mind. I was just gonna. I mean, I was just joking about him, or with him, just because uh, I'm such a big fan of this movie. So yeah, Fright Night, the original one at number one from 1985. So yeah, sorry for this going on a little bit too long, but uh, that's how it goes sometimes. And uh, once again, I really need to get to the other uh, videos that I mentioned before, the top ten. Uh, best movies that I saw during 2019 and the top 10 worst films that I watched during 2019 and also the top 5 of the month for December so yeah keep your eyes open for these videos and uh, yeah hope everyone's doing well out there and uh, take care and I'll see you next time bye bye